Mbantua, colloquially known as Alice Springs, situated in the sprawling remote landmass of Australia's Northern Territory. Arunda people were born out of these lands more than 40,000 years ago. An ancient homeland, now at the centre of a national debate over who modern Australia is and whose voice counts in it. Sharice Buzzacott brings her children to this community gathering so they can proudly express their culture through song and native tongue in a way that she found difficult growing up. I didn't really have that sense of confidence around being Aboriginal, whereas now it's sort of like growing into it and realising how important it is. And yeah, just wanting to have my kids have that confidence and knowing who they are, where they're from, how they connect to people. Before British invasion, more than 250 Indigenous languages lit up these lands. Today, only 14 of them are considered strong. Why is it important to do that? Like, why are we putting songs into language? Because it's very important to keep our language and our kids really strong. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on all our stories. Carry on our stories like, yeah, yeah. like we did. Yeah. As a Gunai Kurnai and Wachabalik man, whose family was stripped of their native tongue through white Australia assimilation policies, I understand the importance of language. But having censored our voices for generations, there's now an intense debate on whether we should be heard. Australia is the only Commonwealth country that doesn't have a formal agreement established with its First Nations peoples. And they say that constitutional recognition is the first step in addressing that original and ongoing sin. Black up in a country that hears my voice. That sin was the brutal dispossession and exploitation of Indigenous lands, waters and ways of life. But with the government supporting the Yes campaign, is the country finally coming to terms with its history? Yes makes it possible. Sharice has been encouraged by the visible support for Indigenous recognition. For us, this has been huge, like to be able to see that support and it resonates with us and makes us feel like, okay, actually we do have people that want the best for us. Infant and child mortality rates for Aboriginal people at double the rate of the rest of Australia's population. Sharice is one of the first Aboriginal midwives in this community and her experience with state institutions means voting yes hasn't been an easy decision. I've been really battling with um, my own sort of mistrust in the systems, with government, with structures, with being a midwife and working in a system that doesn't see culture, it doesn't value language, doesn't value First Nations people for the knowledge and wisdom that we've held this, you know, 65 whatever thousand years. What's the optimistic outlook if the referendum does sail through? I feel like for me that's a display of solidarity, like I feel like yes we're here with you and, and that acknowledgement of like yeah, you know, we did muck up in the past, that acknowledgement of that history and also how can we move forward. We don't really have much else, you know, like what else have we got other than the, the yes vote. Looking straight at me, right in my eye. But not everyone agrees. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples comprise hundreds of politically distinct nations. Here you go, brother. Thank you very much. And there are many that are railing against their own constitutional recognition, including actor and activist Natasha Wanganeen. I'm doing the sovereignty protest back home in Adelaide. So we're not, we're not voting, we're standing in our sovereign rights. You can't convince people with badges, this I know. is our rights break. I know. Natasha believes in self-determination and self-government and yeah. thinks only Indigenous people yeah. should be involved with deciding their collective yeah. futures. In every yeah. community, black or white, there's going to be a range of people have with different opinions. And, yeah, and that's but okay. it, it is, that's, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I don't mm. want 97% of the country who's not black voting on 3% of my people. It's not right, my eyes. So yeah, I, I see it as one big massive distraction from the destruction that's going on still. You know, how can we vote yes to become a part of a, a nation that's destroying our history, our, our, what, everything that we are? I don't see the point in that. And, you know, everyone wants to be kumbaya around a fireplace. It's not going to happen when my people's bones are still getting dug up, when we've still got deaths in custody, high suicide rate for our youth and our men. You know, our women need help as well. They're the most disrespected people on earth. 
unfortunately I grew up right down the road from the really Australia's 235 year history has been built on the systematic erasure of those already here. Our people continue to endure some of the world's highest incarceration rates, and deaths in custody are at a record high. But as Sharice looks to the future, she hopes that her sons will have a brighter one. I'm really hoping that we're able to have a voice and that we're able to be seen, because I feel like if anything, you know, Aboriginal men, and in particular Aboriginal boys, they're the ones that are most at risk. If things don't go right, or if we're not able to be seen and heard, so for me, you know, I really need to have a big focus on what the actions are going to be once the referendum's over. Whatever the outcome of the referendum, Aboriginal people do agree on this. It's time for us to reclaim our rightful place.